Here's why I moved out of my favorite city in the whole world, the full truth. All right, let's get into it. If you follow me on any platform, you'll know that I've been in London for the past three and a half years. I've been in the UK for a decade, more than a decade actually. But super quick summary, I first moved to London to get my degree, then I went traveling for a bit, moved around the UK, and then I came back in 2019. If we want to talk about London and its pros and cons, I think it's really important that we first define what London is. I know London is London, it's the capital of the UK, but beyond that, it is more of a subjective entity. Based on your age, how much money you make, what you do for for a job, where you live, etc. Your London is going to be different to my London. In this video, I'm talking about both the objective London and my subjective London. The first thing that drove me out of London is the rent situation. I've lived pretty much everywhere in London with the notable exception of the West, which is a little too fancy for me. When I first came, I lived in Bloomsbury in university accommodation. Then I moved to Turnpike Lane slash Wood Green in the North. Then I moved to Kentish Town slash Chalk Farm, which is really close to Camden. After that, I went traveling and when I came back, I first lived in Shoreditch, then I moved to Peckham, which I would say was my favorite, and finally I moved to Leighton, which is where I moved out of. Now Leighton is not the most exciting part of London, but I had a really good situation. I was living with my boyfriend and another couple, two of our friends. We had a garden, we had loads of space, we had a study per couple, and for all that I paid about £650 worth of rent, which for London is pretty sick. That doesn't include council tax and bills, but we'll get into that later. Now I want to talk about some hard numbers. I got all these figures from Zoopla and they are pretty scary. London rent has increased by 17% over the past year, which is the biggest year on year increase the city has recorded since 2007. On average, single renter earners spend 48.4% of their income on rent versus in 2021, it was 42.7%. That is a huge jump, but not surprising when you realize that the median asking rent for two bedroom flats was 2,400 pounds compared to 1,900 pounds pre-pandemic. Yeah. Now, a lot of people move to London because it offers higher salaries, more prestigious jobs, more opportunities, which is completely fair, but it's not my situation. I'm self-employed, so my income is pretty fixed regardless of where I live. If your income is fixed, you are much better off living somewhere where your expenses are low so that you can maximize the enjoyment and the profit that you make. But it's definitely not just about the money because as I said, I was paying 650 pounds per month with maybe a hundred pounds worth of bills, which is a lot, but it's not wild. It's not crazy. What really put me off was the idea or the thought of searching for another flat. The rental market right now is so competitive. My last house hunt at the beginning of 2022 was genuinely soul crushing. And it wasn't just me looking, there were four of us, which should make the process easier, but it wasn't. The places in London right now are so overpriced, they're so oversubscribed that you are competing for places that in normal circumstances you wouldn't even want to live with. In London, you have to accept things that you normally wouldn't find acceptable. I'm talking mold, faulty plumbing, wet stains and the paint or really shoddy carpets. And it's fine. It's not life or death, but it is annoying. I mean, don't get me wrong. Beautiful places absolutely exist in London. There are some of the most beautiful properties on the planet, but I can't quite afford them. And most people, your regular person in London can't either. Okay, next category. Now, here are a few things that people might assume drove me out of London. For example, safety it can be a bit dangerous as all big cities can. For me, not a factor. Similarly, weather, yes, I like to complain about it a lot, but it wasn't the decisive factor. In fact, London gets a lot of flack for being really rainy and it's not. There are places in Europe that are far rainier, Amsterdam, Moscow, but what London does have is a lot of bleak days. There's just a lot of darkness slash lack of general sunshine. But yes, while that's annoying and I will enjoy a break from it, that wasn't what drove me out. My next two points are related, starting with number four, commuting. Now, I feel compelled to say a few nice words. The public transport system in London is amazing. It's the kind of public transport that other cities could only dream of. It actually works most of the time. Yes, there are strikes, yes, there are delays, yes, there are issues because it's the oldest, I think it's the, the oldest public network underground, sorry, tube system in the, in the world, in the world, in the world. Now, let me say what I really wanna say, and that is that I hate it. I despise 
realize that I abhor commuting. I think it's the worst part of every day. This is not an objective truth. This is a me truth. I get panic attacks when I'm stuck underground. I don't like my nose in other people's armpits. I don't like other people's noses in my armpit. It's, it's just a whole thing and it very much ties, as I foreshadowed earlier, it very much ties into my next point, which is crowds. Now, I sound like I hate people. I sound like an absolute misanthrope. I'm not. I like people. I, 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 I love people. People are great. People are great at an arm's distance. People are not great when you're forced to be around them. People are... I, I, <laughs> I think I'm over caffeinated. I think that's what's happening here. In summary of those two points, I felt like I needed space to breathe and that wasn't possible. And I'm not just talking about the air pollution. I'm talking more generally. There's a sense of overwhelm that is tied with living in any big city, but for me, London in particular. Now, number six is more complaints about other people. And I know I come across really negative in this video, but the entire premise of this video is negative. I'm trying to point out reasons why I moved out of London. I could go on and on and on talking about how much I love the city and I genuinely, I'm just gonna, just, just a little hard talk. I genuinely do. I think London is incredible. And as I said earlier, it's my favorite city in the whole world. I'm definitely, definitely not ruling out the possibility of me moving back to London at a later stage and maybe not too far down the line, maybe in like a year's time. But for now, I need a break and these are the reasons. That's why I'm being negative. That's why I'm being harsh. London is fabulous. If you're watching this video because you're thinking of moving there, use these as potential downsides, but definitely don't let this put you off. London's great, okay? The, London's great, I'm the problem. <laughs> Now let the complaints resume, please. I have made a thorough list of things that I hate about London mentality. I'm just gonna read it out to you. It starts with not a warm place. That's what I've written down. And what I mean by that is people are naturally forthcoming like they are in some other cultures. For example, I was in Mexico about three months ago now and I loved it. I was there for a month. Everyone was very spontaneous and they are outspoken. They say what they mean. They don't skirt around different topics. They are more upfront. And sometimes I find that really refreshing. Sometimes I really crave that. And I can find the English, British general mentality a bit draining. And I love Fritz. I'm dating one. He's fantastic. He's the best person I know. But sometimes Brits as a general entity, sometimes I find it exhausting. The next complaint I wrote down here is living for the weekend. Now this is true of the subsection of society that I belong to. I would say a lot of young professionals. I don't think I found a good way of articulating this yet, but sometimes I find it exhausting having to plan really far in advance. If you wanna see people in London, everyone's really, really busy. And this includes me, so this is a bit hypocritical, but you will need to put a date in the calendar maybe three weeks in advance if you want to hang out with people who aren't like your best friend that you see on a regular basis and for me that is a level of planning that I don't enjoy I'm someone who's very spontaneous sometimes that works to my detriment and it's not necessarily always a good quality but it's something I personally enjoy and in London it's not always possible and my final point on this topic of London mentality is I don't want where I live to become a huge part of who I am I don't want it to be a big part of my personality. I want to be a human, a person in my own right, and I don't need these external things like my postcode to define me to the extent that they do for a lot of people in London. When I was in my early 20s, I really liked boxes. I liked being vegetarian. Later, I liked being vegan. I liked being left-wing. I liked all these things about myself. I loved compartmentalizing so that I could relate to people on a deeper level, but I realized, obviously, that that actually precludes you from connecting on a deeper level putting yourself in those boxes isn't productive. It doesn't let your personality flourish. And for me, being a Londoner was becoming one of those boxes that I was putting myself into. So I'm, I'm putting myself on time out, okay? I, now I'm Sabina the Londoner no more and let's see where that takes me. Which very nicely feeds into my final point, which begins with a quote. When a man is tired of London, he is tired of life. For there is in London all that life can afford. I probably would have moved out of London sooner than I did if that quote didn't exist. Genuinely, it held so much power over me and I kept thinking, well, if I can't be happy here, then clearly the issue lies with me. It's not nothing to do with London. It's all about me. I need to learn to be happy in this environment because this is the best I'm gonna get. I think it's really close-minded to assume that one place could ever meet all of your needs as a human being. And I also think it's close-minded to assume that staying in one place forever will help you grow as a person. 
London. Yes, there may be in London all that life can afford. It's an incredibly exciting cosmopolitan city with a rich history. There's so much to do and you will never exhaust all of the city's possibilities. But once you have explored that lifestyle, it might benefit you as a person to try something new, to keep pushing the boundaries. If you just keep doing the same thing over and over, you have heard this quote before, it's the definition of insanity, expecting a new outcome. You can't grow if you don't step outside your comfort zone. I'm talking in awful cliches here, but there are cliches for a reason. There's a quote in the book that I'm currently reading. It's The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. She's one of my favorite writers. She's absolutely fabulous. If you want to read more, Station Eleven, one of the best books I read last year or two years ago. Anyway, here's the quote. I don't know. It just seems like such a cliche, living in New York City for your 20s and then leaving. And it made me think, because this is very much true of London as well, I thought, well, am I just doing what everyone else is doing? And then I thought further and I realized, A, maybe everyone is doing that because there is a good reason for it. Number two, not always bad to go with the crowd. And number three, if I'm having these feelings, I should probably just honor them and see what else is out there. See what other lifestyles I haven't tried that might suit my personality better, that might suit the current direction that my life is going in. and what the hell? Maybe I am just getting too old for London and that's okay. If you've ever lived in London, if you loved it, if you hated it, I would really like to hear more about your experience. This, by the way, is where I'm staying right now. My boyfriend and I are traveling all around the UK. We are spending two to three weeks in an Airbnb in a new city and then moving on. And currently I'm really enjoying the itinerant lifestyle. It definitely has many downsides as well, but no situation is perfect. And this is working for me right now. If you would like to hear more about this, this general setup, we're also house sitting. Let me know, we can talk about it. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and maybe I'll see you next week if you enjoyed this, maybe not.